Jesse McConnell, thank you for being here. You are the co-founder and CEO of Rubicon Organics. You have a long history in the sector, which we will get to, but thank you for making time. Hey, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a good looking shirt too. That's what I noticed first off. I know it's, it's good. All of it looks good. And actually, maybe I'll start there because I follow cannabis Twitter and social media uh, fairly religiously. And um, if, if everybody posts there, it's like a, it's a ritual. If you post your Simply Bear stuff, like mm -hmm. you automatically get lots of love. Uh, so kudos to that. Talk a little bit about, talk a little bit about sort of uh, quickly uh, your, your background from let's say Whistler to now. Okay, well, um, I've been in the industry, um, I would venture to say longer than any other Canadian cannabis CEO. Um, so long, long time, decades. Um, uh, background is uh, I did economics uh, at my first university out east, and then I uh, did a master's in uh, philosophy. And so I always think the coming together of uh, philosophy and economics is like the perfect storm for cannabis and what we're going through both financially and as a society as this thing becomes legalized. Um, fast forward to Whistler. Uh, in Whistler, we are the ninth license, I believe, in the country. Um, so as soon as the regs dropped in 2013, we were right there with an application. Uh, very, very small scale. Um, kind of getting our feet wet in the industry was under, understanding what it was going to look like as it was growing. Really stayed away from the, the big, uh, massive uh, greenhouses. So we ran, I ran Whistler for about a year or two. Uh, I then St stayed on as a large shareholder, but went and founded Rubicon Organics uh, with a view to initially enter into the U.S. And that's something that, of course, is still posited out there for us, um, but also to understand how we can take genuine super premium, premium quality, bring it into a sustainable infrastructure. So using the power of the sun, but also develop the type of facility where you can really drive quality. Right. So that's fancy lighting and great HVAC and those type of things. Um, and our view uh, was that we wanted to be about a fifth the size of some of the larger players, just because managing quality across 30 acres, especially early in this industry, um, has proven to be well impossible uh, yeah. for the other players. And so we bid off something much smaller with three acres, 125,000 square feet uh, with aggregate production in the 10 to 14,000 uh, kilogram range um, when fully optimized. And that's proven to be the recipe for success for us because we can dial in the quality while still managing our you know, cost of goods. Yeah, and I actually, let's dive in there just a little bit because we are seeing an industry develop um, in some respects very slowly, in some respects really rapidly. What seems yeah. to be not be working is sort of what you touched on is like huge, you know, million plus square foot cultivation facilities under glass. Like we see more shuttering than opening. Uh, that's sort of a <laughs> sort of good uh, indicator. But also for consumers, they want the product you are putting out in the premium, super premium categories. Um, not to say that that wasn't obvious before all this launch, but like, how did people miss what consumers actually want so badly so early? Sometimes. <laughs> well, um, I, I think there was a few things at play there. Um, uh, the first is that the narrative in the capital markets at the time was funded capacity. How big is it? If you grow it, you can sell it. That notion, which I never believed in, but that's how individuals were getting funded. Um, we funded our company in a very different way. Um, very respectful of our shareholders' capital, um, including my own capital that's in there to the tune of millions of dollars uh, in our my own company. Um, and I, I think that's really important to recognize relative to how maybe some other LPs have managed shareholder capital, which has been pretty destructive. So right off the bat, um, I wanted to build a long-term sustainable business. Uh, I wasn't in it for the, um, the share price and the jump out, right? So that's sort of our starting point. Um, secondly, I, I do believe there will come a time that the industry will be able to manage quality at greater scale. That's an inevitability um, in, in any industry, you know, things start off as unique artisan, they move in towards science, and then, you know, there, you get segmentation data, and then on that basis, you're able to really dial in a consumer insight and what they want, and, you know, it's, it's in, in alcohol, it's a science now, like, the, there's very little art right. left. Now, there is still some with the winemaker, but they know exactly what those taste preferences should look like, what kind of consumer insight they're delivering against, and so on. Um, so, Inside of that marketplace, you also have segmentation between premium, super premium value, and there's a place for each one of those. And it's hard to be the biggest in super premium. Um, and most of these companies were racing for the, the Coca-Cola, which is your sort of 
quality, right? Your mainstream quality. Um, and they neglected the, uh, the premiumization of it. They treated it as a commodity before it's, you know, and it's still years away from becoming uh, anything that looks like a commodity. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that was a big mistake um, by the big LPs. We recognize that the consumer uh, wants premium cannabis. And what is interesting about that, that's different than a lot of other products, you know, the marginal difference in costs, let's take a, an eighth as an example that you'd buy in BC under Simply Bear for just under 40, uh, under $50. Um, for a lot of consumers, that's called a, a week to two weeks worth of consumption. Um, and you're paying $50 instead of $38. So $12 <laughs> across 12 days, that's a dollar a day in the difference. Um, I can think of a many examples, but we use whiskey just as one. You know, Johnny Walker Blue, 300, Johnny Walker Black, 50. Um, if you have uh, a single drink a day, the difference in that single drink is closer to $10 right. in the difference. Um, so spend an extra dollar for your uh, imbibement of choice in, in, in cannabis. It's, it's not a hard upsell. I like, that'll be a good graphic to build, an infographic to build. It's sort of how you think about I'll, it. I'll send, I'll send to you. It's <laughs> <laughs> perfect. I, I want to, um, I want to think about, um, it's been a very strange year. I don't even know how else to put it. There's a million adjectives to use, but like, are there things that happened to, to you or the industry or your, or, or Rubicon over the past, say 12 months during COVID that, that has set you up either better or differently for 2021? And how are you sort of taking the learnings from 2020 and applying it to sort of broader rollout in 2021? Well, um, I don't know that COVID actually impacted significantly what we were going to do on the supply side. Um, we always have had a little bit of a contrarian view, which I think the industry is now coming around to. And that view has been, get your operations dialed. You know, um, the capital markets, of course, are important. Um, you know, that's how you're going to finance the business. But at the end of the day, the consumer doesn't enjoy our product because my share price is $6 or $2. That's irrelevant to them, right? And frankly, it's irrelevant to them to a large degree, the size of my facility. What is relevant to them is the quality that they receive and the experience, uh, the way in which we manage ourselves inside of that supply chain. So things like sustainability matter, you know, and, and should in light of climate change, et cetera. Um, so, it, you know, we're trying to stay true, true to our ethics and deliver a high quality experience to the consumer. And this is a very complicated business. We're growing the plant. We're, you know, there's um, so many product categories that come out of that. We're in an extremely regulated uh, industry. Uh, everybody's in startup growth mode. Uh, there's no maturity. You know, the, the plants have no stability. So you've got cultivars that produce all over the place. So you take all of this complexity together um, and it's really hard to manage quality inside of that. You know, if you want to start a, a pepper greenhouse, uh, Jay, you could come out here today, buy yourself a greenhouse, hire a team. I can tell you exactly where to get that root stock, where to get that plant stock in six months, you're producing peppers. Just as good as anybody else. I mean, there's some... Uh, flexibility there, but like it's it, it's a plug and plug and play, right? That is not at all what's happening in the industry. So we spent this year just focusing on getting our operations dialed and ensuring that we could deliver on that quality, right? And so for us, those key those key metrics um, really were proving that we could grow really high quality flour, um, demonstrating that we are a premium brand builder, and demonstrating by the market proving that to us. Uh, and creating and successfully launching um, some really good innovation with high margin unit economics. Um, and so those things combined, and I'll give you some fun pieces of data there. You know, we are number one in pre-rolls in British Columbia and Ontario in the premium space. Um, recall, I've been in Ontario for six months. I've been selling product. We're already number one in, in the pre-roll category. Uh, we are number one in the premium category in 3.5 gram in BC and number seven in Ontario which is a tremendous credit. That's, that's no small feat. Yeah, and so it's a demonstrating that we can win in premium, right? Because our vision here is to be the dominant player in the premium organic space. Um, I'm not going to be the dominant player in the value space. Somebody else will be, will be dominant there. But we're building brands that consumers love. We're managing our quality throughout the process. We have so many touch points for quality, um, which has meant a few painful uh, experiences as well, including a crop or two that have been really good, but not, not here. You know, they were here. And, and I think a lot, of, um, a lot of LPs have just looked to push that into the marketplace uh, in the search for revenue, right? And 
but but that doesn't build a, the long-term sustainable brand. Yeah. So we've been we've had the luxury of designing the type of company that doesn't have huge cost overheads. My SG&A is lower than anybody that's scaled in the industry. I mean, literally, you can put us up against anybody. Our overheads are manageable. And that lets us focus on quality while others maybe have been focused on survival. Yeah, it's interesting. And I want to think about this because you you have this history and you've built facilities, you've operated facilities, uh, more than one. Um, talk a little bit about sort of how everything is new. There's no maturity, sort of what you said, like Growing cannabis is not new, but growing it at scale, premium, regulated, all those things are relatively new when you overlay them all into each other. And how are you thinking about that? Like when you're thinking about designing and licensing a facility, what do you bring to that? Like, what are your key touch points? You're like, it needs to do these five things in these four ways, and this is how it's going to be dialed in. Or is it constantly changing sort of how you actually think about it? Well, when we start with, can we deliver quality out of this facility? Right. Um, and then you pair that with the business fundamentals here, which is walk before you run. You know, since no one's done this before at scale, you can't go like my peppers example, where you can just hire a team of individuals who've been doing it for 30 years. And so sure, you can scale right away. Um, but now the industry ha has made that mistake, built these huge facilities. They're shuttered all over the place. The, the market hasn't the consumer market isn't there yet. It's, it's, it's growing rapidly. It's very exciting uh, when you look at those growth rates. Um, but they built for a market that was going to be here in five years on the assumption that they could grow quality uh, at that scale when they've never grown a single cannabis plant. That's, I don't know, uh, hubris <laughs> is uh, maybe the right word there. So, you know, it's our view is prove the concept, you know, manage your cash properly. You know, and once you've developed the right system, and that system takes a few years to develop. This isn't this doesn't just happen overnight. But we've gone from being able to produce, uh, you know, or proving that we can produce that quality level to now our theme for 2021 is consistency of execution. Right? You know, I've I've gone from 30, 40 percent uh, of my crop meeting the simply bare uh, level to our exit rate in quarter four was closer to 70 percent of, of our crop, and I'm going to be at 90 percent um, in 2021. So, you know, building, right? Uh, a journey is a thousand steps and it starts with the first one, all kinds of nice little colloquialisms. There's, like the, there's, the, there's the philosophy coming in right there. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's, but it's true. You know, you look at our, our, our old deck, it's, um, you know, the tortoise and the hare. We're just one foot in, step in front of each other, building the story, building the team, building the operations. And we're not having big hiccups or big failures. Of course, we have challenges that we need to overcome. Um, but we're, our system is incrementally building on itself. And now our foundation is well in place. We're, we're market proven with those brands. And we have the confidence to invest behind that innovation and drive the revenue and drive those points of distribution um, to really, you know, to grow the business uh, without concern that we're going to have um, a, big, a big mistake or have to, you know, write off a bunch of inventory or something like this. Yeah. So we, we talked about, uh, uh, you sort of touched on, on BC and Ontario. Um, like where else, when you're thinking about it from a business perspective, where are the other places you want to be in Canada um, that you think will will be a great match for sort of Simply Bear and Rubicon Organics overall? Well, well certainly we, we want to be a, a brand for all Canadians. Um, so we want to have that uh, full national platform. But, but of course, as you go down the list of marketplaces, you are going to look to BC, Ontario and Quebec as their major markets. Uh, with Alberta, a smaller market, but more developed. Um, and you know, again, wanting to be in all the provinces, but having to prioritize how you do that because we're supply constrained. I mean, some others are <laughs> less supply constrained, but maybe but, but, demand constrained. Quality right. constrained. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'd even encourage viewers to like, go look at our old decks here and, and the commitments that we have done, we articulated that we are going to deliver in the market. Every single one of those commitments we delivered last year. You know? um, it's the old adage of under promise and over deliver. Um, just you know, make sure that make sure that you can you can make those commitments, and we did that. And and one of the big ones for us this year or in 2020 uh, was Quebec. Um, getting into Quebec, it's a very exclusive market. There's only a small number of LPs in that marketplace. But before we went in there, um, we knew that what they wanted us for our organic and our premium, but we wanted to make sure that we wouldn't have any out of stocks. You know, that we could deliver against what you know, the wishes of the SQDC were, uh, and we could be a good partner for them. And that's um, really important with any of the uh, distributors that we work with is we make sure that what we promise we can commit to. 
Yeah. Um, so that's that's been our approach across all the various markets, and you know I think you'll see us. Uh, you'll likely see us on the East Coast if we can get our supply uh, where we want it to be, so that we can deliver against commitments out there. Uh, but as of today, we are BC to Quebec. I like it. I like it. I really want to thank you for your time and expertise uh, because it's helpful to get a lens of sort of how you're doing it, the focus you're doing it with, um, and really the underpinning in which you're sort of operating. Uh, which is not let's get 10 million square feet under glass and see what we can do. It's more, let's see what we can do and get it to people that want it. And that seems to be a much more uh, thoughtful approach and one that in hindsight um, would have been fun to see develop for the, the really massive players. Um, but here we are. <laughs> but I want to congratulate you on sort of the focus on that, um, on the positioning that you're, that you're building and on filling my uh, Twitter feed with Simply Bear product. Uh, not you doing it, but, but people opening it up and enjoying it. So, so uh, Jesse McConnell, I really want to thank you for your time. I want to let you get back to, uh, to all the good things you're doing and uh, we'll catch up with you down the road. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show and um, enjoy the Simply Bear product. Don't worry. I will. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Bye -bye.